I go, the wind follows. And the wind, it smells like rain. All right, let's do this one last time. Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I watched Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse second trailer at 0.2 Pebic speed and found 33 new details that will blow your mind. I thought Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse had the best animation out of any movie, but this one tops it. And I promise you, once you're done watching this video, you will love this movie even more. But let's, for the first time in my YouTube career, I have now teamed up with the comic book brand presenting Peter Panda Kills the Metaverse from Disso in comics. This is book one in a six-part series. And the creator of this comic, aka Jason, holds a special place in my heart since he's also Canadian. Unlike another protagonist with the same moniker of Peter P, this comic follows this Peter Panda who's tasked with taking down the NFT market. Now I keep reading Marvel comics all the time to do research before making a video. And as I grow older, sometimes I wish they had made more mature comic content. For example, Deadpool is R-weighted in the movies, but in the comics it's just PG. But this graphic novel not only has unique stories, but there is some very very strong language throughout, which makes the humor come across far better. Because there's no sugar coating, and I'm pretty sure if you're above 18, you'll love it too. Now issue number 2 is coming out soon, so make sure to sign up with your email to get notified when it releases. The comic is available now to order, and the first 500 people to use my link get a 25% off. One special viewer will also get a Peter Panda prize package valued at over $500. So go and support Peter Panda, and see what shenanigans he gets up to. Alright, let's begin. Number 1, the first time we see the character the spot miles actually tries to web him but because spot is a multi-dimensional being and has portals all over his body so when miles shoots his web spot uses the portal on his face and turns miles's web against him kind of like how dr strange used a portal to use spider-man's own web against him and it also is directly taken from the comics where spider-man throws a punch at the spot but the punch comes back at spidey number two now notice in the same scene spot not only webs miles morales but he opens another portal behind him to escape from this grocery store, which then cuts to Miles' parents in a school meeting, and through the window we can see Spot and Miles who got dragged along because of the web. But then the immediate next shot shows us Miles crawling his way to the parents' meeting, probably because he was late because he was fighting Spot. Number 3. In the very first scene where we see Miles swinging, I like how the animators added this extra bits of colors all around Miles whenever he moves at high speed. This gives Miles his own style when he swings, because it almost never happens with the other Spider-Man. Number 4. During this parents meeting, notice Miles has a BLM aka Black Lives Matter badge on his backpack. Number 5. In this same meeting, Miles' Spidey sense warns him about Spot. But wasn't he just fighting Spot before this meeting? Meaning, Miles will start fighting Spot, that fight will somehow abruptly end, Miles will then join this meeting, and there his Spidey sense will again warn him about the Spot. And here we see Spot trying to move the same ATM machine, but the ATM falls on himself, indicating he might have just got these powers, and still doesn't know how to properly navigate them. Number 6. The first time we see Spider-Man 2099 aka Miguel O'Hara, he comes out of a portal. Now notice his webs look nothing like Spider-Man's web. The animation on his web almost makes it look like it's made of fire. In the comics, Miguel O'Hara is genetically imprinted with the DNA of a spider, and his webs are organic and chemically engineered. I'm so happy the animators took their time to actually make his webbing different from all the other Spider-Man variants. Number 7. When Gwen Stacy says that this whole thing was Miguel O'Hara's idea, we see Miguel tossing a device to Gwen. Now this is the same device that everyone in the spider society wears on their wrists. Now notice when Miguel tossed his device, it was glowing with the yellow energy. But as soon as Gwen holds it, it stabilizes and the glowing fades away. The same thing happened in the post credit scene of the first movie as well, where until Miguel put this on, the device was glitching. Meaning this device only stabilizes when it gets a host. So just like this device helps stabilize a host, a host does the same for this device. Number 8. The first time time Miles meets Peter B. Parker, Miles gets surprised. Peter! Miles! Mayday. You have a baby? But notice even before turning to see who it is, Miles and Gwen were both smiling. So just by hearing the voice, they both knew it's their old friend Peter B. Parker. Number 9. Peter B. Parker is wearing slippers that says Cool Dad. You know I was smiling when I saw this detail, and I'm pretty sure this movie is gonna be filled with a lot of dad jokes. Because our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is a daddy now. Number 10. This is Jessica Drew aka Spider-Woman. Notice she has webs coming out of her five fingers all at the same time. Meaning she 
might be more powerful than our Spider-Man. And in the second trailer, we now see that she has a baby bump, which wasn't that clear in the first trailer. Now in the comics, there is a storyline where she deals with being a single mother. Therefore, the baby bump in this movie. Number 11. We see this lobby that we've seen in the previous trailer too. But if you haven't seen my trailer 1 breakdown yet, no worries, let me tell you again about all the variants of Spider-Man here in this lobby. We see Marvel's PS4 Spider-Man donning that red, blue and white suit. Although I'm not quite sure who he's talking to in this scene. Well, it's definitely not our Miles Morales. Then we have Mary Jane and her daughter Annie Parker, Mabel Riley aka Lady Spider, Flash Thompson aka Captain Spider, and a Spider-Man who has a bag on his head. This is actually from the comics, where Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four and Reed Richards helped Spider-Man after he lost his suit. Although in the comics, he only wore a spare Fantastic Four outfit with no shoes and a loose brown paper bag as a mask. However, in the trailer, he's wearing a full Spider-Man costume, only missing his shoes and the mask. I think this is because of copyright issues as Sony does not have the rights to Fantastic Four. We then see Spider Armor MK2 with a slight touch of yellow in the suit. Well, in the comics, Spider-Man does lose his spidey sense for some time, which stopped him from dodging hits that included bullets. Therefore, he had to create a bulletproof suit. And last but not least, we see Spider-Cop and Werewolf Spider-Man. Number 12. In the first trailer breakdown, I told you that Spider-Punk will be in this movie. And now in the second trailer, we officially see him with his guitar. And in the background, we see Gwen and Spider-Man India both looking at Spider-Punk. Now notice Spider-Punk's animation is so powerful. Whenever he plays his guitar, his animation literally overshadows everything around him, including Gwen Stacy and Spider-Man India. Number 13. Spider-Man India's universe is very accurately animated. For example, these vehicles that we see on this bridge are called, I think, auto rickshaws, and even the outfits of the locals depict a true Indian style. Number 14. In these two scenes, except Miles Morales and Miguel O'Hara, all the other spider people look defeated and beaten up. So this scene will probably be the beginning where Miles and Miguel go head to head against each other. But notice Spider-Punk, Peter B. Parker, and Gwen Stacy seem to be standing behind Miguel instead of Miles Morales. This could indicate how everyone will mostly side with Miguel over Miles in the story. And perhaps that's why we hear Peter B. Parker saying this to Miguel. Miguel this isn't what we talked about. This isn't what we talked about. So maybe initially they will all take Miguel's side thinking he's the good guy, but he will slowly turn rogue. And judging by the trailer, it seems there's gonna be a big conflict between Miles and the Spider Society. Because Miles believes he can save everyone. He doesn't have to make any sacrifices. But the Spider Society believes otherwise. They think it's the sacrifice that truly makes you a Spider-Man. Number 15. When Miles and Miguel are fighting each other in Miguel's universe, precisely in 2099, notice when Miguel jumps from one vehicle to another, this yellow vehicle literally loses its balance and starts going sideways. We've seen many Spider-Man jumping or swinging from one car to another, but they never got any car out of balance. And let me tell you why is it. It's because no Spider-Man ever jumped on a car that doesn't have any front wheel. But the one Miguel jumped on has no wheels in the front. And that's why it lost balance. Because Spider-Man 2099 lives in a futuristic world, cars work differently here. The attention to detail in this movie is gonna be second to none in Hollywood. Number 16. Now, as I said, Spider-Man 2099's universe is a futuristic world. Notice this high-speed train on which they're both fighting on is actually a train that floats above traffic. It even has a name in the movie called Metro Lunar. Now, in the real world, China did try to make something like this, but eventually didn't work out. Mostly because it could cause serious damage to roads, traffic lights, and other infrastructure. Plus, the clearance under the train is substantially lower than the height of vehicles allowed on most roads. But I'm glad the animators took this idea and made it into a reality in Spider-Man 2099's universe. And notice Gwen and Peter B. Parker are also hanging on the roof of this train. Number 17. We see a bus with the spoiler written on it with a giant font. Now, I'm not sure, but this could be the animators hiding a billboard that would spoil the movie. And of course, there's a Red X van as opposed to FedEx in the real world, indicating it's an alternate universe. Number 18. When Miles' mother learns that Miles isn't doing that great in his Spanish classes, she snaps her fingers in anger. And notice the animators animated a Puerto Rican flag instead of the usual effect from the comics. This is a reference to Miles' mother who's Puerto Rican. Number 19. In one of the shots, we see Gwen and Miles both looking up towards Miguel. But notice in the next shot that gives us Miguel's perspective, from there we can see Miles is holding something in his hand. This looks like some sort of a Tesseract-ish device, and this could be something Miguel had sent Miles for. And notice there's a creature slowly moving towards Miles and Gwen. Let me know what you think this could be, because I'm not sure. Number 20. In this close-up shot, we can see that Miguel is working on creating another Spider-Man suit in his lab. And this might be the suit that he'll use towards the end of the film. It makes sense that he's so 
much into inventing suits and technology because he has been genetically engineered as well. And yes, I know, Miguel acknowledges the events of No Way Home, how Tom Peter and Steven Strange couldn't even handle meeting two other Spider-Man without nearly breaking the fabric of the multiverse. Everything that happened so far in Hollywood about Spider-Man is now all connected. Number 21. When Miguel activates his holographic technology to show what he has been doing with the multiverse, notice it not only affects the platform they're all standing on, but the color of Miguel's suit changes as well. His signature red and blue suit turns into yellow-orange, meaning his suit functions differently when the multiversal lobby is activated. And if you're wondering what this tiny creature might be, well, this is Miguel O'Hara's holographic assistant. We get a much clearer view of her from this angle. Number 22. In this shot, we see several new spider people. So let me list them out for you. There's a black and white comic style Spider-Man and the spider armor MK3. And this looks like a reference to the anti-electro suit. Now what's interesting is that we can also see Spider-Punk without his mask here. And there's of course Gwen and Miles walking along with them. Number 23. The flashback sequence that shows how Peter died in Gwen's universe is now changed and looks very different. Now keep in mind the first movie only gave us a glimpse into Gwen's origin story, but this one will dig deeper. And that's why Peter, who had lizard skills on his body in the first movie, now looks different and is wearing his regular costume. Or this could be entirely someone else? Perhaps this is another Peter Parker dying in the arms of Gwen. Man, imagine losing the love of your life twice. Number 24. On this high-speed train, Miguel attempts to grab Miles Morales, but notice Miles never lets go of his hand and is firmly holding onto the train. Now the animators followed real-life physics here, and that's why they made sure Miles always had at least one hand or feet attached to the roof of the train, so he doesn't fall off the train. Number 25. Now in the next scene, Miguel again attempts to attack Miles with his claws, but Miles bends his body to dodge the attack. Now notice as soon as Miles floats in the air, he immediately does a backflip to quickly web his right hand on the train to prevent himself from going off balance. I love the action choreography in this movie already. It shows that the directors and the animators took a lot of time to plan it all ahead in their storyboards. Now one more detail that I really like is that Miles never loses focus on Miguel's claws. Right from the beginning, he had his eyes on those claws, so he can anticipate what move Miguel is gonna make. Number 26. We see a shot where the spot is sitting in a place surrounded by portals. This could be the flashback that shows us his origin story. In the comics, the spot, aka Jonathan Owen, successfully creates a multidimensional portal, but he gets sucked into it himself. As a result, all the portals get attached to his body, and he becomes a walking wormhole. Number 27. Across the Spider-Verse is gonna be one of the first Spider-Man movies to be dubbed in 10 different languages in India. One of them is Bengali, and notice there is a billboard in Bengali in Spider-Man India's universe as well. It says dry fruits. Number 28. In this scene, which is probably taken place in Miles' universe, Miles jumps on the side of this bus. And notice the bus driver got scared a little bit. Number 29. When Spider-Man 2099 is doing his badass walk, there through this portal, Scarlet Spider aka Ben Riley shows up. Now notice as soon as Scarlet Spider drops in through this portal, it gives a signal on Miguel's wrist device. Now why would it have a signal for that? I'm not sure yet. So let me know what you lads think about this. And I should tell you, Scarlet Spider is basically a clone of Peter Parker, created to cause problems in Peter's life. But years later, he becomes more than just a clone and creates his own identity as Scarlet Spider. Number 30. In this scene, almost all the other Spider people that we've seen previously join in on the chase to either stop or help Miguel. But there is one important new variant here and let me tell you who it is. I'm talking about this massive cybernetically enhanced spider hero. This is Cyborg Spider-Woman, an original creation for the film and a riff on the Cyborg Spider-Man of the 1994 comic arc Revenge of the Sinister Six, in which Peter is heavily injured fighting the Sinister Six and given a temporary cybernetic arm cast and an eye visor to keep fighting. 31. Towards the end, when we see the whole spider society going up against Miles, notice in this scene where Captain Spider aka Flash Thompson tries to attack Miles, Miles doesn't even try to web him or his feet. Instead, he aims his web for the ground, so he can slide beneath him. This shows Miles wasn't even trying to fight the other spiders at all. He was just running away from them. 32. Here, where they all do the pointing thing, we see PS4 Spider-Man, Spider-Man Unlimited, but what caught my attention the most is the Spider-Man. This is the Prince of Arachne, a medieval version of Peter Peter Parker from Earth 71004. He debuted in the miniseries Spider-Man Fairy Tales. Number 33. As Miles is chased down through the lobby, the trailer ends with one last scene where this undisclosed Spider-Man is sharing his grief with the spider therapist, but everyone bursts through the wall. Now one character that I must mention here is the spider horse. This is Widow the spider horse. In the comics, Patrick O'Hara, who is a web slinger, has a telepathic connection to his horse Widow, and that is exactly what we see here. Meaning, if his horse showed up, Patrick O'Hara will be in this movie as well. Notice one last detail from the trailer. This unknown Spider-Man who was having his therapy session didn't 
didn't have any device on his wrists, meaning him and the spider therapist was in fact in their own universe, living their normal life. But it's Miles and the Spider Society that invades their dimension. And that's it. This would be my breakdown of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse trailer at 0.25 x speed. I hope I managed to give you some details you didn't catch before. If I did, then please give me a thumbs up, grab the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then, I'm Kevin Hart and I'll see you lads in the next one.